So here it is. If you are a hard bastard and want to look as much, this is the watch for you. If you want to go and do some extreme rambling, cave diving, skydiving, ocean dwelling, anything that you could possibly think of, this is the kind of watch that is marketed for you. And I just like this kind of watch. I mean, I've always been in a sort of tactical watches, tough watches, field watches, that kind of thing. This is right up my street. So when they reached out to me and said, do you want to check out this watch? I didn't have to think twice because this is me. If you check out my other videos, you see I've reviewed loads of watches which are tough and suits my lifestyle because not that I'm a tough guy. I spend most of my time in an office uh, wearing very ordinary clothes and a very nice ordinary watch. I don't go into the wilderness that much, but when I do, I like to dress up for the occasion. I'm not one of those people that wears like a full on camouflage outfit and uh, has a go bag just in case the apocalypse comes. I'm not one of those people. I just like to have appropriate equipment for the task. And that's where this comes in. That's why people buy these kind of products because it's a piece of equipment. It's a tool. It's just adding to your lifestyle. It's a bit of fun. Now, what is fun about this watch is the things that drew me in are their unique selling points. Now, this is a company in America Core Essentials. And what they do is they sell lots of gun and knife and belt and accessory related goodies. Now here in the UK, we have extreme rules and laws against using any kind of weapon other than maybe a rolling pin to uh, attack someone who has broken into your house and wants to kill you and take everything. But you lucky guys in America get to protect yourselves properly. So we are left in the UK to deal with any assailants uh, by maybe bludgeoning them to death with a large black watch so that's where this comes in the core eclipse now the unique selling point of this watch which i'm going to get straight into is the fact this has this very clever system where you feed the strap in and it has a ratcheting system and it ratchets underneath here into all these little grooves and the underside of the strap. And there's two straps provided. There's the land and the sea one. This is the land one. I'll show you why they've stipulated one is for the land and one is for sea in a moment. But the thing that's cool about it is it's got micro adjustment, which allows for you to, if you're going on a epic hike and your wrist swells a bit because you're getting you're actually getting some exercise for a change, it uh, allows for you to do some micro adjustments so your watch isn't strangling your wrist so your hand falls off. And of course, when you're going on an epic adventure, you need both hands preferably. So it's good for that flexibility and adjustability. Now I'm just going to grab this other strap. Here it is. Now this is deemed the one for the sea. The main thing I'd see is it's got this bit here you get on a lot of dive straps, which allows for a bit of extra flexibility. And I wouldn't say stretchability because there's zero stretch in this. Uh, wrap around your wrist if you're wearing a wetsuit. Because this, of course, has 300 meters of water resistance and almost always pointlessly, but I don't really mind them, helium escape valves. If you're a saturation diver, you could take the saturation diving, but could you? I don't know. Is that a pointless thing? It's just an extra gimmick, but we love gimmicks. If we didn't love gimmicks, we wouldn't buy watches, would we? <laughs> That's the thing. Now... What also is also a gimmick, it comes with this hulking great case. You could probably put a hamster in and it would survive a nuclear apocalypse. So if you want to protect any pet gerbils or hamsters from any impending doom, this is the case for you. Adds to the sort of charm of this product. Love it. Very tactical, very cool. And oh, I've lost a bit of plastic. So I'm going to show you again the main thing, which is why I was interested and intrigued about was this system here where you feed the strap in and it starts to click into place it's a really satisfying little pop and a click if you see this bit sort of quivers as you uh, push it through which uh, that sounds really erotic i'm sorry about that but as you press this to release it it's very smooth release again this isn't a sex video but there's lots of popping and smooth releasing very nice really good lots of the tiny micro adjust here so you're going to get this to fit you but if you're a big fella which you'd need to be or a big lady of course we love a big lady i definitely do occasionally but um if you want a big watch with a big strap this is the one for you because it's a 44 mil that's a beast of a watch but it's about the same size as a casio duro it wears like a casio duro to be honest with you tiny bit heavier now stats and specs the way i like to do that now it's pretty easy i verify that so Here's a quick sort of 
flashed through me checking the stats and specs. And as you can see, I've verified the measurements, etc., the weights and all that jazz. So I'll cut and paste that and put it in the description there, so it's easy for you to refer to. But what I'm here to talk about is just the other stuff which you can't just get from the website. And it's just having a bit of a chat about this kind of crazy watch. Now, what seems to be sort of the go-to thing to do when you have a watch like this is it's going to be tactical, it's stealth. The all-black look is very cool. I like the fact it's just all black. And the downside to that, though, is the loom on this is as weak as a candle in the wind. Uh, sorry for references to Elton John there, but it's, it's pretty poor. I mean, you've got it on the hands a little bit. And you got it on these little dots around here on the inner rehort chapter ring, whatever that's called. Anyone correct me? As you can see here, these little dashes. It's not that spectacular, but we'll forgive it that because it looks mean, it looks menacing. But if you want it to be a proper tool watch, I want the loom to literally burn my retinas at night. I want this to look like a Jedi lightsaber to impress all my nerdy mates when I'm going on a night hike in the mountains. I'm going to go check out the loom on this bad boy. You're not going to do that with the Accor Eclipse, unfortunately. It's just pathetic. It's difficult to get a stealthy look and have amazing loom. But, you know, again, we could innovate here and just have some kind of Indiglo light system like they do, or Tritium. I don't know, it's $300 plus. Could we have Tritium for that? Definitely, I think. There's some options, I think, that could be explored by Core. If they wanted to make this ultra pucker, tactical, I'm going to kill you in the woods kind of look. This needs a few little upgrades to make it like that. Land and sea. That's what this can do. Everything. It's a tactical, all everything, do everything, beat the hell out of a ninja kind of style watch. So it's got what you would expect from a tactical style watch. You've got the chunkiness, the robustness, the all black finish, which I think will age quite nicely. I think as it's getting nicked and damaged a bit, it'll look even more cool and rustic. The bezel, which I don't think is going to be great for diving because there's no loom in it at all. Um, it's got a lovely feel to it, but it sounds cheap. It literally sounds very cheap, but it feels expensive. And I think that's the important thing. If you've got it as a fiddling device, which is about all it's going to be used for, um, it's really well engineered. There's no play in it, no bounce, no back play. It's as stiff as a something hard and lovely, precise action. And it lines up beautifully. Us nerds love things that line up beautifully. And us nerds also like to time things. I like to time how long it takes me to boil an egg. I like to time many things in my life, like how long was my last toilet visit. And that's where this can come in. You've got these screw down things because it's got 300 meters of water resistance. So the screw down pushers are great. And it's what you need for it to have that resistance still. So you've got your stop and start function at the top and this Ronda movement, which again, the stats and specs will state what that is uh, it's a Swiss movement with the individual ticks of this chronograph counter, which is that white tipped second hand timer thingy going around. You stop and then the reset, it goes all the way around like that. It's not snap back like you get with the Seiko movements, but you know what? I really don't care. But the timing is cool. I like the fact that you've got up to an hour of timing. Like you've got, it's no, not an hour, sorry. You've got 30 minutes worth of hunting timing on this, but this little hand here is just your seconds time. So you've got all this functionality. I've been able to time something. You've got these fiddly pushers to sort out and then you undo them and you go, right, I'm gonna time something and you get going and you've got a massive hulking great 44 mil beast of a tactical watch, which is gonna kill ninjas. And then you've got the tiniest little dial with a very difficult to read second increment going around when you're timing something. So I wish they could just come up with a way of making that easier or better timing something just having a bit of a bigger and a better dial but i'm just splitting hairs here really because it's the same on mini watches i'm gonna put this on wrist to show you you can't pre like engage it and then put it on because it won't fit so you have to struggle by resting it against your chest feed it in the slot so i fed it in the slot and then you have to feed it on like that so it's you get your own little technique, I reckon, to feed that on. And you just you don't feel any clicks as you're pushing it on. And then if it's a bit tight, you can just press that button a little bit and it releases. So too tight, as you can see, it's cutting the blood supply off. Quick release, lovely. Tuck them in the keeps. There's a little locking feature on the keep here. So it doesn't flap about. No one wants a flappy strap. 
and it fits nicely. As you can see, it's a big, bulky, hulky watch. It feels a little bit weighty, even though it is a relatively light watch. It's not ultra light, but if you want a watch, or you feel it on your wrist, and you know it's a bit of a tactical beast, this is gonna work for you. You see, yep, seven inch wrist that I have in my possession, it is great for this size watch. So if you're a burly man or woman and you want a burly watch, this will fit you beautifully. And it's easy to take off. You just quick release and off it goes. I like that. The criticism of this strap though, one thing is, even though it looks really cool with all these little divots, whatever they're called, uh, dimples, nipples, I don't know. You're out and about doing your tactically things, getting mucky and filthy, because that's the kind of fun thing you do when you're planning for the zombie apocalypse. That's going to get very gunky and mucky in there, and you just have to agitate it with a brush or something to really get in there on the nooks and crannies. That's the only downside. From wearing this a few times, I've noticed as well, it's not hugely breathable. There's not much wicking action going on uh, for allowing the water to escape and things like that and sweat. So it can be a, get a bit clammy, and it's a very chunky strap with no taper. So if you want that chunky look, this definitely does that job very well. Practical as well, date complication, and yeah, it's really clear to read because of the contrast with these greyish hands. It's easy to read and get a quick glance at the time. It's not too complicated. So what would I change? Well, other than maybe having some straps that are a little bit more interesting, not just everything being black, it'd be cool maybe if you wanted to not be trying to replicate ninja world warfare or hiding in the forest and having nothing of any colour. I wouldn't mind an orange strap for this. It would look really cool. And the fact it's 24 mil lug width is a bit of a beast, so it's tricky for you to rummage through your strap collection and go, oh, yeah, I've got loads of 24s. 22 maybe, 20s would be better, but here's a big watch. 22s would be ideal. And I've alluded to already, I think the Loom could definitely be better. But as tactical watches go, it is actually surprising. It's fun. I like this ratcheting system, although initially fiddly to sort of get it on your wrist. It's very easy to quickly adjust. The straps feel so tough that you could tow a lorry with it. I mean, it feels like a tough watch. The finishing is great. No sharp edges. The brushing's nice. The plating's nice. It's got a little bit of pointlessness to some of the aspects like the helium escape valve and that tiny dial but and no loom in the bezel for example but you know what overall it's a bit of fun it's not expensive it's just over 300 bucks if you want digital get a g-shop we want analog and something that just feels like a really well-made piece of kit get one of these bad boys you won't regret it thanks so much for watching my clunky review of a chunky watch and i really hope you enjoy some of my other videos check them out if uh, you fancy seeing more of my off the cuff kind of reviews do subscribe, click on one of my other videos, and hopefully you'll enjoy. Thanks for watching this one. See you in the next one. Bye for now.